About 20 years ago on a trip to India, I decided that it would be a nice thing to do to experiment with opium. I uh, smoked it once, just once. Um, it was, as they say, a pretty euphoric experience. Um, it's hard to explain such things as anyone will tell you when you're uh, talking about uh, experience with narcotics. But it's bloody nice. The feeling is extremely nice. In fact, it's beyond extremely nice. It, you simply can't believe that your body can take so much pleasure and feel good. Um, and even for me, uh, afterwards, when you have sort of a hangover, I guess you're going to withdraw right off the bat. I had uh, cramps and I vomited a bit and uh, that sort of thing. But even that, it was just a minor little issue. I like. I, I didn't think that it was really all that bad. Certainly, my uh, my experiences with hangovers from alcohol are a lot worse. Um, but that did leave me with a terror of um, hard drugs. Um, since then, I have done practically no hard drugs at all. Um, and again, the other experiences that I've had with hard drugs have pretty much been on the experimental uh, level. In other words, I just want to know what it's like. I'm curious. Now, the interesting thing is, um, hard upon uh, my three trips to India in that time, and uh, my early 20s came my mid to late 20s, and that was the period when I was so horribly depressed, and this was after my uh, trip to India, uh, trips to India actually, and never once did it occur to me that I might want to um, smoke some more opium to feel better when I was depressed. In fact, I lost, I completely lost interest in everything that was that I thought was fun in life, like alcohol. I didn't drink at all. Um, I gave up uh, eating fun foods because it all just tasted like ashes in my mouth. I basically put food in my belly to keep myself alive. To uh, fend off starvation, I guess. I didn't get any pleasure out of it at all, but I ate when it became less pleasant uh, to not eat. Um, so I I guess the, the condition is known as anhedonia. You, you don't enjoy anything. Um, and again, as I say, I'd had experiences with, or a, an experience with a pretty ecstatic state. Um, any junkie will tell you that the first time you ever do something like that, it kind of blows your mind. Uh, but again, it didn't occur to me that that might be something that I'd want to do, to, 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 um, to pull myself up out of the depression. Um, I understood in some way, I suppose, that that just wasn't going to help me. It was going to make me a lot worse. And um, little palliatives aren't actually what is going to cure this problem that I had. I had a condition that needed to be conclusively controlled or cured. Temporarily raising my mood wasn't going to <clears throat> wasn't going to actually cure the condition. Um, now this took a lot. It took a lot. It takes a lot for a young man with his pride and his arrogance to admit that he's um, you know got problems, serious problems. Um, but. I managed to do that, and I think that's one of the reasons why I avoided ending up as an addict when I was so severely depressed, because you would think that when, when depression is that severe, you're willing to put up with the hell of addiction just to stop being depressed, but somehow I understood that that was simply going to make it worse, because you know the, the evidence of what other people go through when they get addicted to various things, drugs and alcohol, said, all right, <laughs> that just might not be the way to go. Now that got me thinking over the course of my life why I didn't get addicted to opium at the time. To why didn't I go back and start loading my veins <clears throat> uh, when I went back to Canada? Because I felt how fabulous it is. And then I went down into the depths of severe depression. And there never even seemed to be any danger of this happening to me. Um, and I think that it goes to the heart of what addiction is. And addiction, if you ask me, is when you lean on something, some substance or some thinking or some habit or some um, any sort of action or, or, uh, or indulgence that you have in order to solve your problems, in order to right the ship, in order to put the equilibrium back into your life. Your mood has gone down, 
you feel terrible without your uh, fix, therefore you want your mood back up, so you take your fix. Um, I'm a reformed smoker, uh, and one of the uh, things that happens to you when you give up smoking is you get religion about it. Well, that I certainly did. I have religion. I, you know, I'm one of these tobacco is evil types. I keep my mouth shut about it, but it, that does happen to you when you brainwash yourself into not smoking anymore. Um, because again, you realize this this addiction is serious, and you have to sort of conclusively turn yourself against it. Um, and one of the things that you do have to overcome is the idea that this is part of your daily routine. It's part of the fun of life, and that you're actually giving up part of the fun of life is giving up your addiction. Now I can't even imagine why I ever smoked. It seems like such an insane idea to have ever done that. But I suppose, in a way, I was addicted. Um, and it's this, you know. Addiction, you, you remove an addiction from your life and it doesn't leave a void if you've actually conquered that addiction. Um, but not all pleasures are addictions. For example, um, I still like um, those sweet, horrible, revolting granola bars that have candy on them. I don't eat very many of them, but on occasion I've been known to do that. Um, I also... Uh, enjoy fresh fruit and sometimes I do overdo it on fresh fruit I've been known to eat too much and you end up cursing in the bathroom for uh, half an hour or so while uh, everybody laughs at you because you've eaten 19 apples or whatever but by and large I eat fruit wisely I eat food wisely um, but I enjoy my food I most certainly do there's nothing I like better than sitting down to say fresh baked bread and a bowl of homemade soup it's just it's wonderful but it's not that that's a plus in life that's something that is not necessary for the equilibrium of life um, it's just an added benefit to the neutrality or the sort of I would say positive neutrality the sort of gentle sort of complacency that uh, that I suppose one would call happiness um, it's just an adjunct to that it's not necessary I won't feel deprived if I don't get my steaming bowl bowl of French Canadian style pea soup with uh, homemade bread. It, it's not going to kill me if I don't get that. But oh boy, do I ever enjoy it if I sit down to it. Now, I, that's not an addiction. Going to the cinema on Friday night is not an addiction. Um, going for a walk in the park is not an addiction. Uh, bouncing your uh, little child on your knee is not an addiction. It's rather just something that's nice in addition to life. Um, I can understand what happens when you have to give certain things up. For example, I am now, um, I think that I've gotten something called acquired alcohol intolerance syndrome. Booze throughout my life has always been fun, okay? I've uh, been known to overdo it in my life, uh, quite frequently actually. Um, I, my body has just suddenly said, nope can't do that in the last few years. Uh, whenever I take a drink, my temperature goes through the roof. The, the drink tastes like it's I'm drinking uh, liquid copper, and I start to sweat like you wouldn't believe. Horribly sweat. My face turns red. I can't do it anymore. My tolerance is gone. I went to the doctor. The doctor says, I don't know what, but that just happens to some people. You're perfectly healthy. I can't drink anymore. It's not the end of the world. I, 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 I don't feel a void in my life. I used to enjoy doing that, but now it's stopped, and I can't do it anymore. Oh, well such as life. You know, that's what happens. I still got my disgusting treacly granola bars to eat. And when that goes, well, I got, you know, dumb TV shows to, to, to enjoy. Um, I sometimes get the impression that people that have an overly negative view of the world are expecting far too much of it. They expect something to come along to blow their mind and to restore their faith in how fabulous the world is when the world is rather just ordinary. It's not going to blow your mind and a lot of the things that do blow your mind you don't really want to happen anyway. Um, once when I was in the army I had some idiot call down an artillery strike accidentally on a position where me and the rest of my buddies were and uh, that was probably one of the biggest rushes I've ever had in my life. Uh, I don't want to repeat that. It's wonderful, cool memories. You wouldn't believe how hard we laughed after it was over because nobody was hurt because we, you know, we just couldn't believe that we were sitting there with the ground rumbling underneath us and explosions and dirt flying everywhere. And we just laughed. It wasn't fun, actually, when it happened. 
these peak experiences tend not to be all that fun when you're when you're doing it. Or if they are uh, fun when you're doing it, there's some sort of hangover afterwards, like my uh, experience with opium. There's going to be consequences if I keep doing this, because just look at any of the tourists that have spent a long period of time in India and end up addicted to this stuff because it's so cheap and plentiful. Um, <clears throat> It's not peak experiences like adrenaline uh, highs and stuff like that. You, you you crash afterwards, and I would often think that probably a lot of these adrenaline ex experiences aren't really all that fun anyway. Um, and the things that are too ecstatic probably have a very high price tag on them. Go for the little things. Um, it's uh, it's surprising how um, if you're in the right headspace how satisfying the little things are. And one of the things that I noticed, in, again, in my delving into the subject of poverty and happiness in my travels in, uh, in, in Asia and the third world, is the fact that wealth and uh, happiness and poverty and misery are not, uh, are not uh, necessarily related to each other. I understand you need a minimum to keep yourself uh, uh, protected from the elements, food in your belly, etc., but uh, after a while of diminishing marginal utility, one of the laws of economics says the more you get, the less it means to you. So wealth is not necessarily um, e equivalent of happiness, and poverty is not necessarily the equivalent of misery. Um, all things in moderation, I suppose. Um, and um, understanding the difference between an addictive pleasure and a harmless pleasure. A harmless little thing that's not going to do you any harm, and you certainly aren't going to go into withdrawal if you uh, if you break it off. Of course, um, I'm talking about Epicureanism, and Epicureanism, if you ask me, is sane indulgence in the pleasures of this life. Um, enjoy the little things. Don't worry about the big things. Delve into that philosophy, and I would think that anyone who is an atheist and is not an Epicurean um, might be. Uh, in a pretty miserable situation. Um, having said that, I, I can't judge what's going on inside of anyone else's mind. Um, I'm neither an atheist nor an uh, actual Epicurean, but um, I have definite leanings towards both. Um, addiction? No, I don't think life is addiction. I think there's plenty of addiction in life, but uh, the best things in life are both free and non-addictive. <laughs> Thank you.